What's up, everyone? So, so, apologies, I'm recording with my phone. I don't have a laptop at the moment because mine is a piece of shit. Um, but I want to add another aspect to this channel, uh, and that is Yu-Gi-Oh! I'm a very avid Yu-Gi-Oh! player, or I was back in the day. I am getting back into it now. Um, I was out during the pendulum summoning shit, but when Link started back up, um, that's when I got back in. So, I want to start adding to this. Um, on top of the music, because I feel like the music's just not enough, and with money being as tight as it is, it's hard for me to continuously put out collection updates, and I'm not the greatest at reviews, I feel. Um, but most of these cards I've had for a while. A few that, a few I've gotten recently, some I've gotten lucky and pulled out of packs, as you're about to see through this deck. Um, the others I've just had for years, and years, and years. So, this first deck I'm going to do, I have three deck profiles I'm going to show and the first one is going to be my Fabled deck. I just recently built this one, um, just because with the Link Summons, um, it's very easy to get around that special summoning limit, especially with Synchros, with the, uh, the way I had this deck built. Um, Fabled's are very heavy on discarding to get effects. Um, a lot discard to special summon, some discard to um, add to hand, but it's really a really solid build, I feel. There are a few cards I'm missing um, that I need to get for this deck uh, to make it the way I want, but other than those two or three, I think it's great the way it is. So let's get started. So first, we have two Fabled Kushano. Uh, di you ditch a Fabled monster to the graveyard, except Fabled Kushano, and you get it back to the hand, which obviously that's a helpful, extremely helpful effect when it comes to setting this deck off. And this and it's a level three tuner to boot, so great, great staple in any Fabled deck. As is. This next one, we have three Fabled Crosses. Uh, these are the dual terminal ones, uh, which is which are really pretty, by the way. Uh, cross, when it's discarded the graveyard, you get to special summon a level 4 or lower uh, Fabled Monster, which is great if you're needing a tuner, or if you have a tuner on the field and you're needing to synchro summon. It's just absolutely great. And I know you're, you're probably thinking, well, if you're talking about links, why are you talking about synchro summoning like crazy? We'll get to that, I promise. But Crust is great for the going crazy with the Synchro Summons. Next, we have Fabled Grimrow. Uh, we, have, we run three of those, and the reason we do three Grimrows is because it helps you get any Fabled to your hand. Any Fabled. Um, and what I use it to search for Nizuchi most, because with Nizuchi, uh, you'll see here in a minute, you get to discard to Special Summon, and then... Um, Special Summon Nizuchi, and then using Nizuchi's effect, you can Special Summon another Fabled monster from your hand. And if you discard a card that Special Summons itself, or Special Summons something else, then you get a huge Synchro right there. But Grimro is a great searcher, um, since it can search any Fabled without limit. Next, two Ravens. Um, reason I'm not running three, I feel like three would be a bit of a dead draw, especially with the amount of tuners that are in this deck. Um, but Raven, you discard a card, it'll gain a level plus 400 attack, and that gaining a level is very crucial in Synchro Summoning if you're looking to Synchro Summon something higher, like Fabled uh, Valkyris or Fabled Leviathan. Next we have two of the Fabled Ganashia, and this one's great. When it's discarded, it's Special Summon back with plus 200 attack. Um... So it's a great beat stick uh, if you're short on synchro summoning. But it, unfortunately, the drawback is it is banished. Uh, it does banish itself once it's uh, removed from the field if you summon it that way. So that's the only drawback, but still, it's a great 1800 beat stick if you can summon it that way. Next, we have one Fabled Nizuchi, which I need to get a second one of. Because like I said, you can discard a Fabled Monster and Special Summon... Any level 2 or lower Fabled from your hand. So if you have a level 2 tuner or a level 2, like a crust, and you have a tuner um, that you've discarded to your grave, then you can sum if you discard a crust, for example, you could summon this, a Cerberal or a Raven, and then discard a crust to use to summon Nizuchi, and you'll get any Fabled monster level 4 or lower back. Great for big synchros if you're looking to go level 6, level 7 if you can pull off a raven. Next, we have two Fabled Cerberal. This one, simple effect, when it's discarded to the graveyard, you special summon it. Great level 2 tuner, works very well with Nizuchi. 
Next we have one Fabled Chawa, and I do want to go up to two uh, because you can discard any Fabled monster to special summon it, which works great, again, with Cross or Cerberal, um, especially, uh, especially if you're using this beginning of the game. It really helps with those Link summons uh, if you discard a Cerberal. Next we have non-Fabled monsters. We have one Tour Guide. And the reason we have one tour guide is because everything in this deck, aside from two of these monsters, is a fiend. Um, and you special summon any level 3 or lower. Now, you can't use it as synchro material, but you can use it as link material, which is very, very helpful. I usually pair this with the Sangan here. That way when I link summon, I can get Sangan's effect as well. Next, one Ash Blossom. Um, I got lucky and pulled this out of a pack, just a random $2 pack I bought at Walmart. And this card's great. It stops from adding to the deck to the hand or adding to or special summoning from the deck or sending from the deck to the graveyard with cards like Foolish Burial. It's great. It's very versatile. I'd like to go up to two in this deck. I feel like three would end up being a dead draw. Maybe not, but Ash Blossom, great card. And last monster, we have Glow Up Bulb. Simple. It's a great tuner. Um, it's in the top card of your deck. You can special summon it from the graveyard. Unfortunately, you can use only use that effect once per duel, but still, great card. Great card nonetheless. And my cats are trying to say hello. Say hello, kitties. All right, moving into the spells. One Foolish Burial. It's at one, unfortunately, but it's great for getting, especially, uh, it's great for getting in monsters into the grave, whether it be Glow Up Bulb or Kushano. Those are the two I usually go for. Uh, Kushano, obviously, because I can just add it straight back to the hand if I have another Fabled monster. Uh, Glow Up Bulb, because if I need a tuner really quick, I can just special summon it from the grave. It's great. Next, another card I want to put up to two is Twin Twisters. Discard a card, target two of your opponent's spells or traps and destroy them. Um, obviously very helpful in this deck with the discard effect. Uh, and you're getting a two for one. And you're benefiting off of it in this deck because Fables rely so much on discarding. Mind Control, if you uh, if you can't pull out Tour Guide in the beginning, very helpful to uh, help with that Link Summoning. Soul Charge, if you... <laughs> I really use this in like dire straits if I either really need synchros or need to bring back a link or if I need to um, just if I got Raigeki or something and we need to bring back all my synchros, we can soul charge and get up to five monsters back if my field is clear. It's really great. Pot of Duality. Uh, I'm only running one, and for good reason, because duality uh, prevents special summoning, which this deck does heavily. Um, I really only use this if I get it beginning of the game. I'm considering sideboarding it, honestly, but it at the same time, it does give me that draw power. So, Next, we have Book of Moon. It's a staple. That's all there is to it. Uh, as are the next two, with... Uh, Raigeki and Monster Reborn. This just came back on the February list uh, at one, which is great. Raigeki's been back for a while, and I love it. Um, especially, I, back little backstory, I got this card when it was super cheap. I traded for it dirt cheap, and now it's going for like 30 bucks. Very good card. Field Clearing, and then Monster Reborn, obviously. And we have a Monster Reincarnation, uh, because again, the discard effect. Just very helpful in this deck. Next, we have the Solemn Trio. We have one, uh, one Judgment, one Warning, and two Strikes. Um, I'm fairly confident Strike's going to end up being at two, or maybe even at one. Um, maybe not this next list that's supposed to be supposedly be coming out this month, um, but the, it took them a while for, for them to put Warning at one. So I think we got Strike at three for a little while, maybe down to two, but I have a feeling it's going to be at one soon, but they're great staples. They're very versatile, pretty much universal, and a must-have for every deck. Next, we have one of the most broken cards in the game. For some reason, back at three, Bottomless Trapple. It's great because it any summon, flip, special, link, synchro, fusion, uh, normal, tribute, it, get, it gets rid of it. Plain and simple. As long as they're 1,500 or more attack, obviously, but Still, one of the, one of the best cards for any deck, and for some reason they put it back at three because Konami's crazy. 
Next, we have two Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Uh, obviously, the discard effect again, uh, getting that off, very crucial. Um, and then you can bounce a card back to the top of the deck and make your opponent dead draw for a turn. Or two if you're lucky. Next, two Jar of Avarice. Um, and the reason is because, it, it's like unlike Pot of Avarice, it targets anything. Spells, traps, monsters. Um, Pot of Avarice only targets monsters, but you get to draw two. And this, this is basically just a trap version of Pot of Avarice, except it targets anything and you only get to draw one. But it's very, very useful in this deck um, with... Uh, just adding every monster you used back into your deck just so you can do it all over again. And then the last one for the main deck, we got a mirror, mirror force, just staple. That's all there is to it. All right, going into the extra deck, we have two link monsters. We have Decode Talker and Proxy Dragon. Uh, Decode Talker, it's so broken. Uh, it gains 500 attack for every monster that points to it. That puts it up 33 potentially. And whenever you inactiv your opponent activates a card or a monster effect that targets a uh, card that you control, you can just tribute one of the monsters it points to. Even because it does... The, my, my first complaint was it gives your opponent an extra zone, but you can just use that. And, it, and Decode Talker will gain the attack from that too. But you can just use that as tribute bait. And Proxy Dragon, um, I like to use this, uh, if you have, D say you have Decode Talker out as your special, or your extra deck zone, you bring out po Proxy Dragon, it gives you that extra middle zone as well. Uh, and then if a card, and if any card you control were to be destroyed by battle, uh, or by card effect, you can just tribute one of these two. Now, pr the only drawback with Proxy Dragon is it only has 1400 attack, but still very, very useful. All right, and everything else in here is synchros. So for fabled synchros, we have the fabled unicorn, two fabled Reagan, one fabled Valkyrus, and one fabled Leviathan. Only one unicorn because you're not synchro summoning summoning for level fours very often. It's pretty much five or higher, um, but it does have a really good effect when you and your opponent have the same number of cards in your hand. You negate all spells, traps, and effect monsters' effects activated, and they're destroyed. So, it's really great. And I checked the rulings on this. If a continuous effect activates while it's on the field, um, then you can negate that as well, which is great. Uh, the Reagans, they really just give you the draw power especially uh, when you need it, especially since you're going to be discarding and uh, special summoning so much. You'll only have you'll probably only have one card or less in your hand, and that just brings you back up to two more. The Valkyris, um, it's level eight, a little bit harder to pull off with uh, with these monster combinations, but it is possible. Um, and you can discard any fiend monster to draw a card, which is great because Fabled again, is, I'll say it as much as I need to. This deck is discard based. And then Leviathan, it's a 3000 beat stick. It's level 10, um, which makes it a little bit harder to pull off, but if you can get a Raven and the right combination, it's very possible. Um, I've pulled it off quite a few times myself, and then its effect, if it is destroyed, by whether by card effect or by uh, battle, you can send or take three Fable monsters and put them in your hand. It's really great. So you can just go for the whole Mizuchi train again. All right, next we got a few staples. Ally of Justice Cataster and TG Hyper Librarian. Hyper Librarian's obvious because look how much synchro summoning you're gonna be doing. If you can pull this off early game, that'll really help you get that draw power. Then you get Cataster, which is great uh, for running over anything that is pretty much in your way that's higher, than, that's higher attack than this. Or even higher defense. Or if you're like a friend who shall not be named, uh, and you run three marshmallows, it's great for getting around those two. Next we have a magical android. I really just run this if I do need the life point boost. It's a level 5 monster and I gain 600 attack for every face-up psychic monster. Obviously this is the only psychic, so... Next we have Black Rose Dragon and Stardust Dragon. Uh, Black Rose, if I do need the field cleared, um, if I'm really that desperate, uh, it's great to have. Stardust, if I need something that can negate constantly, then obviously that's great to have too. And then last, 
uh, but not least. We have Brynak and Trish. Trish, I get to pull off a lot. Uh, for it being a level 9, it's really not that bad. Um, or not that hard to pull off in this deck. And its effect is so broken. I'm, I'm glad they brought it back. And then Brynak's at 3, but I feel comfortable just running the 1. Because I'm really not pulling him off as much as I am Trish. And then, just really quick, I do have a 3-card sideboard for now. I want to add to it, but I'm not quite sure what. I have the Dark, uh, dark Hole. Because it is a staple, and it is a field clearer, although I feel like Regek gets the job done well enough. You have Hate Buster. Um, I didn't think about using this card at first, but my friend with the Marshmallows uh, gave me this idea. It's pretty, it's actually pretty good, especially if um, they were to attack a higher level Fiend monster on my field, like Leviathan or Valkyrus as an attack. They would take the life point or my att the attack points and damage to their life points, and then call the Archfiend. It's great. You can just uh, target one level five or higher fiend monster in your graveyard, discard a fiend, and special summon the targeted monster. You can only use its effect once per turn, but still very broken in a fable deck if I do need it. But that's all I got for you guys today um, for this deck. Uh, I have two more profiles to record, and then I'm I don't know if I'm going to do trade binders on here. Um, I did that in the past and it hadn't worked out too well, so we'll see. But thank you guys for watching, thanks for subscribing, see you guys next time.